So a short little pop quiz before we get into some of the laws. Do you need a hunting license to hunt wild pigs in the state of Texas? No, you do not, with one caveat. On public land, you still do. So any land owned by the state of Texas or like some of the national forests, stuff like that, you still do need a hunting license. Can you move wild pigs across county lines? Yes, you can. As long as you're moving them to an approved holding facility. And then are toxicants legal in the state of Texas? They are not currently. Poisons. Yes. Yes, ma'am. What's the genetics? Are they all like just from domestic pigs? Are they interbred with javelinas or what's the So javelinas actually aren't, their javelinas are more related to hippos than they are pigs. They're not even the same species. Um, wild pigs, you have two. So you have domesticated pigs and then you have Eurasian pigs. Uh, domestic, you have domesticated pigs that got out, went feral, and then we brought over Eurasian boars for hunting. Some of the, them escaped and they've interbred and then you have wild pigs. And so they're all the same species. Um, depending on what area of Texas you're in, you're going to have some that have a little bit more Eurasian boar in them genetically. Some of them that are just basically fourth, fifth, sixth generation domesticated into feral pig. Uh, and it's, it's really going to be a mixed bag here in Texas. So as of 2019, uh, both residents and non-resident hunters no longer need a, um, a license to hunt wild pigs. I will say this though, if you plan on leasing any land out for hunting, as a landowner, you can require the people who lease your land out to have a hunting license to hunt wild pigs. Toxicants. I always like to touch on toxicants. Um, currently, they are not legal or registered in the state of Texas. Uh, the two big ones that are under research and advisement right now are warfarin and sodium nitrite baits. Uh, for those of you who are following it, or for those of you who may not know, warfarin is the one that became uh, was shortly uh, became legal under an emergency act several years back. Then it, became, then it was denied by the courts and had to become studied. Uh, sodium nitrite is one that is currently being tested. Uh, TPWD did a t test on it with uh, carrion, um, had some good results with it. Here's my, here's my thing on these. A&M was doing some of the testing on this. There was, Suppose there, I think there's supposed to be a report on it this year. We may or may not see it come to market. I don't know. I don't know if Texas legislator, legislature, legislation will uh, allow it. But what I do know from talking to the people who are doing the research on it is that it is not going to be the one thing that solves the problem of wild pigs in Texas. It's not going to be the civil bullet that just stops it or solves everything. Um, it's not gonna be the thing that if they would just make it legal, we would see pigs be stopped in five years or 10 years. Um, it could become a potent thing in our tool belt. Um, it could become something that could help get rid of some of those trap smart pigs or some of those pigs that you just can't get to with traps. But uh, from everything I've seen and been told from some of the people that are researching this, um, it's, it's by no means going to be that silver bullet that's just going to uh, wipe the pig population out overnight. Uh, this is our pig hunting mobile that uh, you, you uh, gracious taxpayers have paid for us to have. Thank you so much. Um, ammo prices have raised, though, so we will be passing around a collection plate at the end of this.
Uh, I'm joking. We found that on, on Google somewhere. Um, I wish so, right? So the legal options currently in the state of Texas, we have trapping, snaring, shooting, aerial gunning, and trained dogs. Of those five, can you all guess which two have been proven to actually reduce wild pig populations? I think I heard one of them. Trapping? That's one of them. Aerial gunning is the other. So, trapping. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to touch on this briefly because I'm going to give a whole trapping demonstration here in a little bit. But it's highly effective. It allows you to capture large groups, preferably the whole sounder. Gives you the option to transport and sell the pigs live. Allows you to make a little bit of extra money back on the uh, effort you put into it. And you can combine it with other methods. Some of the disadvantages. It is time intensive. Even with all of the technological advances that we have, all the technologies you can put into it, there is still a time commitment to trapping. And there is a material cost. Uh, now the, the traps we're going to show you are kind of the high end of that material cost, you can do the low end. With pre-baiting, again, the important part of trapping is, is that we want to train the pigs to the bait, not train them to the trap. So when we're trapping, it's important that we're going to pre-bait the site. Um, my general rule of thumb is that once you've picked a site, so you're going to look at your piece piece of land that you're trapping on, and you want to find a place that has wild pig sign. Whether that be wallowing, rubbing up on telephone poles, tracks, hair, anything. And if you picked a good site, and you start baiting, and you put your camera up, and all the pigs in the sounder are coming to that bait in less than a week, you can go ahead and throw your trap up in one day. If it takes more than a week for those pigs to come to that bait, build that trap over a couple of days. Because if you picked the right spot, which means you picked a spot that had pig sign, pigs were already coming to it, and it takes them more than a week to come to free food, there are already spooky pigs. And then cameras. Cameras are vitally important uh, it's going to let you know how many pigs are coming, when they're coming, uh, and allow you to, uh, to understand when to close the trap or when to set the trap. So this is a basic corral trap. It's just some cattle panel, T-posts, and a wooden gate uh, worked off of a tire trigger. So this would be an animal-activated trigger. That tire would be in the back one-third of the trap. Uh, you put some corn in that tire. When the pigs come in, they'd start rooting around that tire. When they move the tire, it drops the door. Basically, you'd look at your camera. If you have big pigs, you'd put a big tire in there. If you have small pigs, you'd put a smaller tire in there. And then a box trap. Can anyone guess what some of the problems with a box trap might be? Non-target species, that's one of them. You won't get the whole sounder, exactly. How many pigs do you think you're going to get in that thing? I mean, you got a couple piglets and shoats in there, but big pigs, sows, boars, one, maybe two. Snaring. What are some of the problems with snaring? Non-selective. So, how many pigs can a snare get? One. Can you tell that snare only catch a wild pig? So some of my suggestions with snares is, one, if you're going to snare, make sure you have a hunting license. There are some ways we can help with non-targeted species. Has anyone ever seen a pig rubbing up against a telephone pole? 
does, it, does everyone know that pigs run, rub up against telephone poles? So pigs like to rub up against telephone poles because the creosote kills all the bugs on off of them. And so that's a pretty specific pig thing to do. Deer don't do it. I've never seen any other animal do it. So if you have a, a telephone pole on your property that's all worn out on the bottom of it, it's probably from pigs doing it. If you set a snare up on it, you're probably going to get a pig. If you, have a, if you have a fence line on your property that's got where your pigs have been going under it and you've got pig sign on it, maybe you got some uh, hair on it, pig tracks underneath it, set a snare up there, good chance of getting a pig. So there's ways to help reduce the non-target for snares. But while this isn't an effective way to reduce the population, it is a way to pressure pigs out of an area for a short period of time. Again, wild pigs are smart. They understand when you're trying to get rid of them. If they start seeing these pop up, if one or two of them start getting trapped in them, you start killing them. It will pressure wild pigs out of an area for a short period of time, two to three weeks. Shooting. Now it always breaks everyone's heart when I tell them that shooting is an effective way to actually lower the population. I know shooting is my favorite way to take care of wild pigs. It's usually most people's favorite way. But in, in all honesty, it is a low harvest method. It is an effective way for pressuring hogs off of a piece of property, especially if you, if you have the time and intent to go about doing it for several days in a row. And you can increase your success through the use of suppressors, night vision, and thermals. However, again, most people don't have the time or the ability to go out every single night and do it night after night after night. However, like we talked about with, with some of the ground nesting birds and things like that that pigs like to go after, if you have an area, a piece of land that you want to keep them out for a short period of time, you can use it as a way to pressure hogs off the, off the uh, property for a short period of time. Yes, sir? I've heard that wild pigs will attack a hunter. It's just, it's, it's really not true. I mean, under the most dire circumstances, if you've really just cornered them and put them under the most pressure, they might. But honestly, they, they just want to get away from you. Aerial gunning. Now, aerial gunning is a highly effective way of getting pigs off of the property in a short amount of time. However, it's also highly expensive. Uh, this $800 to $1,000 an hour is uh, pre-inflation, pre-COVID. Uh, you're looking at more closer to $1,200 to $1,400 an hour now. However, you do have the potential to remove large numbers at one time. Uh, when I was working at Lake Somerville State Park, we had uh, USDA come in and helicopter uh, my trailway while I was there, and they took 300 some pigs off the property in eight hours. Um, and so, there are ways around this cost. Um, some counties, not every county, um, have USDA um, APHIS in them that have programs going uh, where they can helicopter your property if you have a big enough chunk. Um, also, if you have a big enough chunk of property and you're comfortable with it, some, some outfitters will pay you to allow helicopters to come and hunt your property. Uh, the one thing, the one caveat with that is, is that normally they do it very high up. Um, they do it with AR-15s, and you have no idea who they're selling those hunt to, and who's riding in those helicopters shooting. Um, so I always just give that as a little bit of a caveat. It is a way to get helicopter hunting done on your property at often no cost to you, even some money in your pocket. However, 
there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of risk involved in that. Uh, this is a USDA APHIS. So the, the nice thing about them is they use jet helicopters and shotguns. They can get real low, they can go real slow, and they know exactly what they're shooting at. And then trained dogs. Again, trained dogs aren't a very high, uh, high take method. Um, however, they are again effective in pressuring wild pigs out of an area for short periods of time. With that, I'd like to thank uh, Texas State Soil and Water Conservation Board. They provide the funding that allows us to come throughout the state and give these presentations. And then here are QR codes to our Facebook, our Twitter, and our website. We keep, keep all of those up to date with our newest publications and our events. Uh, we have some new publications hopefully coming out soon on uh, wild pig movements on habitat, uh, wild pig, uh, new wild pig disease pub publication coming out. Um, and then within the next year or so, we're gonna have a publication coming out on uh, wild pigs uh, management on small acreage property. Uh, and those will all become available on the Facebook and uh, website.